So goals today are just to really help you all understand our platform and have a good understanding of how to get started in in the right way. Our, our ad platform has grown quite a bit over the last few years, so there's a lot of subtle nuances with how things work. So I want you all to leave here with a comfortable way to, to get started on Pinterest. So we'll be covering high-level measurement and what that means for your business account. And the assumptions are here that you all haven't necessarily kicked up an ad campaign on our platform before. Some general foundation before a campaign is launched, we'll talk through as far as creative formats and best practices, designing your creative, and then the actual campaign setup, just an understanding of how our infrastructure works from a hierarchy perspective and targeting. How does targeting work? Where do your ads serve? We'll review that and I'll actually jump into Pinterest and show you guys live time ads and how they're serving. And then once you have stuff running, how do you think about optimizing based on your goals? How do you make sure that you are driving results for your business and scaling your campaign? There's a lot of information in this deck and we did that intentionally so when we share it out you guys have uh, you know a lot of information to go off of but like Lisa mentioned I'll try to breeze through this and give everyone about 10 minutes to, to ask questions. Um, the first thing about Pinterest is to understand how pinners use Pinterest. Um, we have what we call causal intent so 98% of our search queries on Pinterest are unbranded. For example, you go to Google because you know you want Nike red shoes size nine. You come to Pinterest because I have no idea how to dress myself and I'm like, Pinterest, what are some cool men's fashion trends that I should be aware of? So the intent is there, but because of that, people are being inspired and searching earlier on in their consumer journey. So there's not a more impactful way for an advertiser to reach a pinner before they've made a brand decision. And I say that because it goes into how we build our creative, it goes into how we measure success on Pinterest and all of these things. So reinforcing that, that Pinterest is this discovery engine of ideas where people are coming to get inspired about ideas before they've made up their mind. If you're building a coffee table, if you're buying new, new clothes, you know, everything that we have on our platform and our 2.2 billion monthly search queries. The first thing I'll drive, uh, jump into is conversion tracking. We have uh, our own proprietary conversion tag that uh, our partners deploy on their website, and it allows for really robust conversion tracking. So we will see someone who saw an ad on Pinterest. Did they click your ad? Did they see their ad? Did, you, did they save your ad? Then they go to your site, and then they purchase something. This allows us to see cross-device attribution. So if someone happened to see your ad on mobile, but they convert on desktop, Perfect example there, if you have a high price point item, we know that you know you potentially convert better on desktop, but we want to make sure that we leverage our mobile, mobile inventory since 80% of our daily usage is on mobile. So this just helps you understand how our conversion tag works and why it's so important. There's three other, there's three holistic reasons why we need to have the tag deployed before we start running any ad campaign. One is for tracking conversions, as I, as I mentioned, and also measuring results. We'll be able to see data across the board to understand how is iPhone performing versus Android, how is male versus female, different interest categories, maybe food and drink is performing better than home decor. It also allows you to build audiences. So if people went to your site, they added something to their cart, but they didn't check out, we could actually retarget those individuals on Pinterest systematically and automatically. So it's a very lightweight way for you to make sure that you're reaching people at all stages of the consideration cycle. Um, this is a very, very busy, noisy slide, but I want you all to have an understanding of what events we can track with our conversion tag. I've bolded the ones that are most important for our advertisers, add to cart, checkout, page visit, and sign up. These are all configurable with our singular uh, conversion tag and we'll have documentation on how to deploy this. I didn't want to go into the nitty gritty, uh, but we have pretty detailed instructions of how to deploy. So the primary one here, check out, add to cart, sign up. The Pinterest tag works in a different way where we look at behavior for three different events, click engagements and views. And we look at those holistically over a longer time horizon, back to that intent graph that I went through. We know that people take longer to convert because they haven't quite made their mind up yet. So they're in that discovery phase. So within our system, you can toggle these, these windows up to 60 days, but our measurement science team has come to standardize this. And we know that you will get the most benefit from Pinterest by measuring on a 3031. Uh, which again is configurable. This is synonymous to you know Google's methodology of last click, last session. We just know that we have a broader time horizon and we cap 
uh, we capture conversions in each of these buckets and you will see those in, in any reporting that you pull. Uh, touching quickly on creative, I think this is honestly a big miss for folks who come to Pinterest because they'll design creative and if you've spent all this time launching your campaign, if pinners aren't engaging in your creative, it won't get clicked and then it doesn't serve in our auction. So really understanding your value proposition, your business and your goals to using that to reverse engineer um, creative. I've hyperlinked a really awesome link that our actual our sales team curates, this Pinstances board that you can see by vertical, by goals, so direct response fashion, or maybe it's branding. You can see a lot of really good stuff in there because for me, I'm a visual learner. It's much easier to see what's already worked and then design and specifically tailor that to your business. Uh, but we bucketed this out into three categories, awareness and consideration. I won't spend too much time talking about them individually, but holistically for creative, contrasting colors, your value prop needs to be on the pin. So what are we asking our pinner to do? Do we want them to buy something? Do we want them to read an engaging article? Like easy three-step deviled egg recipe. So we know what the pinner's getting into and think of our white backdrop on Pinterest and ensuring that your brand and your colors contrast to that in feed. Um, I will quickly just go into Pinterest real quick to show you guys. Safari, where do we go? So I just was searching dogs. But you can see that within pins here, contrast will really make things pop out. And up at the top, there was actually a Home Depot ad um, right here that's promoted for a specific thing. But let's go to shoes. So here's a great promoted pin by Walmart where they're really taking in value proposition of a specific brand, contrasting colors. Um, a really good way to understand what ads are performing, our system will serve the highest quality ads at the top of the feed. So Allbirds, Walmart, um, Rothy's.com, you can always call out a promoted pin because we will actually disclose that it's promoted. So that's a really good way to do your own research to say, hey, what, what is working for my overall brand? Jumping straight into campaign setup. So we've talked about getting the foundation in place, tag, creative strategy, and then now we want to make sure, we want to test. We want to see what works on Pinterest. We're going to launch in a specific hierarchy that I'll talk about, and then we'll talk about optimizing uh, and testing. This is, for me, this is actually what we've shared with our sales team as well. We want to align on goals, expectations, and our test budget. That's important. Um, it's The biggest thing here is when you're building an ad group, it's important to have no less than $50 per ad group per day with a CPC bid of about $1.50. We do in our ads manager disclose a competitive CPC bid, but this is just a good mental starting point where people tend to fall short. They'll launch 50 ad groups with $5 a day and then our system just can't get enough delivery to understand what is gonna work. So the foundation section here we talked about, tag and creative, launching, and then um, I'll go through in detail here about the overall structure. So we have, a hierarchy on our system of campaign ad groups and pins. It goes, the campaign is at the top, that is where lifetime or daily budgets sit, and then we have ad groups. All targeting lives at the ad group level, and within that, under ad groups, you will have pins. Our auction, our CPC auction, and all of our auctions will auto-optimize towards the highest CTR within a given ad group. So if you have two pins within an ad group, it's gonna automatically find which one has the highest engagement from a CTR perspective and serve accordingly. So this is just a, a good mental notion to understand our high level hierarchy, campaign, ad group, and pin. And most of the, the meat lives at the ad group level from bids, budgeting, and targeting. I, I've specifically really only talked through our biddable CPC auction. We have quite a few different ways that you can buy on Pinterest today, but about 95% of our audience that we're speaking to here today and our partners live in our CPC auction, which is a second price biddable auction where you'll, you'll pay one penny above the bidder below you targeting similar things. So back to that red shoe example. We also have a biddable CPM and we have a biddable video auction where I think are the most 
the secondary and tertiary most relevant auctions for our partners here. You can see we have a few different formats from what we call um, promoted app pins to this concept of one tap or two tap. I, I won't spend a lot of time there, but the native experience on Pinterest is, I will go back and just show you. We have our standard pin where pinners are used to what's called a close up. So this is called a two tap experience where then I would click through to the partner site um, or this most likely is, oh, this is also a two tap ad, but sometimes we have promoted pins that will drive directly to a partner site. And that is what we refer to as uh, a one tap ad. six more minutes so we've talked a lot about static pins and that that will be the most important thing that our partners leverage it is just a standard static image 600 by 900 is the ideal aspect ratio when you're designing we have a lot of creative best practices guides on our business site we talked a little bit about bids and when you're in our ads manager once you select targeting parameters as you can see on this mock-up Android mobile iPhone mail there's above that on the screen there's actually interesting keywords then it'll say this is a people are bidding between this range so I mentioned a dollar fifty is a good starting point that is always a, a good competitive bid within all of our categories to see what will start to work and we'll talk through optimization here uh, shortly targeting is really important to understand where our ads serve and how. So on, I'll just jump back into, so this is my home feed. We, we have two swim lanes for ads on Pinterest. We have our home feed and we have search. So home feed is browse. This is a curation of my interests on Pinterest. You can see my wife up there has pinned a lot of stuff. We share similar interests, but now ads are serving here based on my behavioral engagements with Pinterest. I love RVs. I love cooking. I love design. And so here Ancestry DNA is targeting me based on my behavioral um, activity on Pinterest and we call that interest targeting. So you can see here Stitch Fix. They happen to know I'm a man within you know specific parameters so they're serving me an ad and see really great pin contrasting call to action. Um, I happen to do a lot with like personal finances so there is a national debt relief there ad. So that's home feed. And then within search, let's say that I want to know financial hacks, for example, I would run this search query. And now there's this component of our platform called search where people are now set, serving ads based on my demographic data, but also my search query. So here was a eight ways to pay off credit card debt by an advertiser. And, and it's stacked with organic content, of course, as well. Here's a Wix.com ad. They know that people who potentially search this query that meet criteria happen to convert well building their own business. So there's two swim lanes to thinking about ads on Pinterest. Um, search, which is on the right side here, and then browse, which I called home feed. These are the two primary avenues that I like our advertisers to really be in the mindset of a pinner and designing creative for. Browse is more intent driven based on behaviors that you've expressed. Search is going to be a little bit more actionable, lower in the consideration funnel because they're searching for something implicitly. So we want to potentially design creative specific to that. Our ads manager allows you to target ads in both respective swim lanes, or you can target into this with one ad group into both areas to see what works. Cause you might want to say, I don't really know what's going to perform better. So our system can help figure that out automatically. Relevance is a big thing. So when a pin goes in our ecosystem, our organic algorithm and a promoted will systematize it and make sure that we're targeting relevant ads. Um, ads that aren't relevant, you know, if we were searching gummy bears and we served a weight loss ad, as a perfect example of a highly irrelevant ad that'll get penalized in our auction. Uh, so we want to be very cognizant of what we're targeting, how we're targeting it, because our system will naturally suppress things that aren't designed around the ad group level, have accurate pin descriptions, where the board description of where those pins lives at is accurate, and then targeting. So we look holistically at these four areas to make sure that our system is doing the best to serving very, very relevant ads. That's what I love about our platform. We don't, we do our best to not have bad ads serving to people who are not in that mindset talked about keyword targeting that's that's in search there's an infinite 
grouping of keywords that you can target within any specific category. We have tools on our ads manager that'll be released called a keyword generator that'll help you pull up these keywords. Um, and a really easy way to see what keywords are, are trending is if you, you know, go back to like my dog query, all of these keywords up top are trending keywords. So it's a very easy way to say, oh, dog bed, dogs big, dog house, dog art, all these things are um, trending keywords to help you know, fuel on the, the targeting inspirational front to see what you'd like to target. Interest targeting, I mentioned, comes in our home feed or browse. We have a finite set of interests that are all listed in Ads Manager, from food to desserts to women's fashion, beauty. They are a, a fixed set of interest across our total platform. I believe that list sits at 522 today and will always be growing for, for new endemic partners that we launch. So in short, targeting is keyword and interest where they serve in search and home feed. I'll try to do, go through this very quickly. I know we're coming up at Q&A time. Uh, optimization. So now we've we've launched we've launched our ad campaign. Things are running. We have good creative. Now what do we do? And I think I'll just jump to this slide. This for us is really helpful to understand how our auction works. So the x-axis is how am I performing against my marketing goals? My y-axis is how are we are we spending all the money we would like to spend in our auction? And then on that is, what do we do in these quadrants? So if the far extreme left side, we're not performing and we're not spending any of the money that we're trying to spend, what do we do? So we try to increase CTR and we try to optimize new landing pages, new targeting, and conversely for the top right end spectrum where me as a marketer, I sell honey online, I'm hitting my goals, I'm, I'm spending you know the $500 a day I want to spend, like, what do I do now? So you increase budgets. That's a very easy way to increase your reach. And maybe you can't, if you increase your budget, you can't spend more. So then what do you do? Then you expand targeting, you expand creative. Uh, so the, this is a, a really good quadrant to just try to visualize how, how our system thinks. And I've disclosed this hopefully simple formula. It's effective CPM. It's how most ad platforms think and operate. It's a way to normalize performance to make sure we're serving to the most competitive bidder. So it's your historic CTR multiplied by your CPC multiplied by a thousand. So on our platform for us, we want to make sure that we are, you know, above a dollar fifty-two dollars from an effective CPM. So if you have a really high CTR, you could bid lower. If you have a really low CTR, you have to bid higher. And so those are just the levers that our, our sales team, our account management consultants operate on when working with our partners to make sure they are driving success. I'm a minute over. So I'd love to open it up to any questions for the next uh, 10 minutes, if there are any. There are a ton of questions. So let me make sure I could pull it out here so that you can take a look at them as well. But I think one thing that I can do is go over some of the more tactical questions that we had. So I think Chris and then uh, a couple folks had asked about whether this is gonna be recorded and whether this is gonna be, uh, whether the slides are available. So we will make sure that we, you have the recording, the slides, um, and in any follow-up materials, well, they'll come in an email in the next one to two days. So keep an eye out on for that and folks that registered and didn't attend uh, or folks that attended live will get it as well. And then we had a couple great, actually product, feedback comments from Elisa. So I'll share those with you afterward, Giancarlo. I think that's great. She talked a little bit about the Pinterest tag, placement targeting, um, and she also loved your optimization lever slide. So um, that was great feedback from her. And so Giancarlo does work with the product team, so we can definitely share that feedback. Okay, so let's go into some of the questions. Um, so I think Elisa was asking a little bit about testing. And so she wanted to know if these tests actually work now. So she's been promoting pins and sometimes it hasn't worked. And so she's latched on to one pin over the other and promote that one only. It grabs the one that has the low CTR and it's been really buggy. So do you have any feedback on how to start some of the tests with Pinterest? Yeah, so if I understood that question correctly, when launching a new test, your baseline CTR, CTR is a very good indicator of how pinners are receiving an ad, and we prioritize that metric when 
our ad server goes and retrieves a pin. So your baseline CTR on our platform is 0.2%. If a pin is not above that, it'll be very hard to scale. So if I understood that question correctly, you tested with Pinterest and you just had a hard time getting traction and it seemed like one pin just kind of took off, um, which is good for that one pin that took off. And then we'd want to understand why that one pin performed better than others and then iterate creative iterations on that singular pin. Hope that answered that question. Addis is asking a little bit about video ads. So she asked, why do we pay for video view ads instead of per click? It's too pricey. So do you have any feedback on how to bid um, appropriately for video ads versus um, traffic ads? So our biddable product works in a biddable CPM auction with a $6 price floor. And I would want to dig into that to understand your marketing goals. I'm assuming that you want to drive, let's say, online purchases where me as your sales rep, I would say, don't worry about running video right now. Um, it was designed primarily when we first went to market at the end of last year to be a branding play, so an awareness driver. We will be building a direct response video product this year. So I would make sure, don't focus on Pinterest ad products. Start with what are your goals and then map to a Pinterest solution that's right for you. In that case, our CPC auction with static pins will be the best thing for you. Awesome. Broadwin asked, um, she says, thanks for the insight, but she asked, what kind of timeline do you recommend for running an effective two-tap campaign? A few days, a couple weeks, are always on campaigns valuable? For me, it's more a sense of data and delivery. For example, you could run, let's say, X dollars over 30 days or X dollars over a singular day. But what I really want to make sure is, is that pin getting delivery and do we have enough data where we feel that we're confident in the success of that. If you were selling $1,000 trampolines online, we're going to need a lot more data to understand if it's going to work. If you're selling $2 sandals online, then we would be able to spend quicker and have a higher level of conversion. So to answer that, it really depends on if we drive a click to your site, how well are our partners at converting those clicks? Then that would then influence our, our strategy. Overall, from when we take on managed partners, we typically test on a 30-day window where we use that time to understand what's working, what's not, trim out what's not working, and then at day 31, we really amplify our efforts. Great. So Richard asks, how do, how do you spread the budget throughout the day? It always seems like the whole lot hits at 12 a.m. Good question. Our auction is set on UTC time. So that's Greenwich Mean Time. And I don't actually know why, but that is what it is. Over the years, we've gotten a lot better at spreading delivery throughout the day. So if you are seeing anomalies where, let's say, you have a $20 budget cap and you're noticing that that's spending within the first few hours, um, it shouldn't happen. It used to. About a year and a half ago, we didn't have these throttles in place. Our system tries our best to understand what is your budget, how quickly are we fulfilling that budget, and spreading it across the day. Um, we didn't, we by design didn't want to have our partners have to worry about pausing and unpausing and delivering at certain times of the day. But our peak times of usage are the the evening times. So if you can think from pinner mindset, they get home from work, they put their kids to bed, or or whatever you do in the evening, and then you get onto Pinterest. So our evening times spike in, in daily traffic, as do weekends. Awesome. So Susan and Allison actually have more questions about one tap versus two tap. Can you address whether there's a cost difference between the two and what determines if your ad is two tap or one tap? So good question. There is a setting on the campaign level. We talked about hierarchy, campaign ad group pin. You'll see it in your the, the native browser where you can toggle one tap and two tap. Generally speaking, two tap is very effective at driving really cost effective clicks. What I love about our native environment, what we call two tap, is it, it qualifies a click better. So someone is closed up on a pin and then they're like, oh, I really want these red shoes. And then they click through to your site. So for me, it is a double verified click where people are way more intentional. So you'll see a, a far lower bounce rate than the one tap counterpart. But if you were a publisher and you're wanting to drive effective clicks, then that one tap would be a good solution for you. They're priced. They're, they live in the same auction, so they, they're priced the same. Um, generally speaking, I would suggest always launching with two tap. 
believe I answered that question. Awesome. And so I also want to refresh on in terms of like higher quality. You mentioned that the higher quality ads show at the top. And so how is that determined? And then that was actually the same question from Marley as well. So how do you determine ranking and higher quality? Can everyone still see my screen? Everyone can still see it. So to answer that question, our system, so they know I am John Carlo. I just searched red shoes. I'm not seeing a promoted pin. That might have been a bad one. Let's do another one. I will answer that question visually. So right here, overstock.com is running a promoted pin based on my search query for kitchen tables. Before this ad was served, our system went into the marketplace of everyone bidding against kitchen tables who wanted, you know, mail, web, X, Y, Z, and Overstock and Joybird took the first two ad slots. Um, that is a function of their historic CTR and their historic bidding. So actually, these are one-tap ads. Some uh, that was a good question before. If you see an ad on desktop with this little tiny arrow, that means that we're taking you straight to site. So these two pins have higher CTRs than folks that might live down here, like Birch Lane, and or they could have higher bids. We don't disclose that information, but it goes back to that pres uh, this little formula here. So Overstock has a high CTR. They have a competitive bid. Overstock's a very perform performance-driven company, so they care a lot about back-end CPA ROAS metrics. So it's not like they can just bid $50 a click. So to answer that question, they have a healthy, effective CPN, so they're very competitive, where our auction will naturally serve them. Uh, that's not to say that you know other advertisers don't perform well below, because people are scrolling, and they get into related pins, so this one could perform far better than the overstock. They just happen to be potentially more price sensitive, or their CTRs might be lower. So in short, CTR is a, an important metric, but a lot of times it's not what we optimize to because we want to make sure we're driving sales for our partners and CTR is just a piece of that puzzle. Awesome. So we're pretty close to time now. Uh, one last question from AW is he's asking if we offer um, a paid service for assisting on optimizing our Pinterest account and getting started with our marketing on Pinterest. Sure. So that's actually what my whole team specializes in. We have a, a pretty robust sales team to help our partners find success. So we actually, there is, I believe on the last slide here, there's a link to um, filling out your information. You could fill out your company info and then we'd actually have one of our reps reach out to, to just set up an intro call to learn more about your business. All of our, that's kind of our sales approach. We just learn about your business and how we can best position a marketing campaign on Pinterest to hit those goals. Awesome. Thank you so much, Giancarlo. We have about a dozen more questions left that we won't be able to get to. Giancarlo and I can take a look and we'll make sure to follow up in the recap email to some of these questions that didn't get addressed. And for other folks, we do have another webinar coming up next week and the week after. We're going to bring back some familiar faces that you've seen already. Um, Amy from the creative team is going to do more on um, content for Pinterest and then Thea is actually going to talk a little bit more about how to reach parents on Pinterest. So thank you so much Giancarlo for sharing all this knowledge with the group. It was really helpful for everyone to learn a little bit more about setting up campaigns for success and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you guys.